UFC Fight Night, Pereira versus Hernandez. Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. I'm Andy. That's Jim. We're going to break down every fight, and we're going to tell you about a 5% best bet that we have up available at Wager Talk. Let's start with our first fight of the night. Uh, listen, Dana likes fights to get that don't go very long. And boy, this one has got to be in that in his wheelhouse for right here. Rebellus mm-hmm. to Spain and Austin Lane. Besides unders, uh, what do you think about this fight, Jim? Austin Lane isn't a real MMA fighter. He's just not. He's not a fighter by trade. He's an ex-football player. And God, do I love fading ex-football players that get into <laughs> MMA. It's just... Uh, get, Is like, this get a new a, theory? It's Former. always been. It's always been. I mean, you got... Uh, who's our... Greg Hardy's the, uh, the Greg just, Hardy's a good the, one. The best, uh, the best. I, I can't think of a few of them off the top of my head, but we see it in the heavyweight division all the time. It's always ex football players. Um, he's just bad, man. It, I thought he had a chance against Tafa. First of all, you can't lose to a Tafa and get my money. So let's start with that. Can't lose to a Tafa. Um, the Jonathan Dins fight, <laughs> Lane had a real path to victory. And just like tripped over his own two feet, it wasn't <laughs> happening. Dince is ripe to be beat too. Don't don't get me. Can't wait to can't there. wait to get can't a wait. right spot on that guy. But it's not it's not Lane. Uh, we've seen him try to wrestle. He gets a takedown. He can't control. He lets people back up. And if you're gonna let the Spain back up, he's gonna put you to orbit. I've had an absolutely fantastic read on the Spain. I wanted to fade him his last fight. Did not bet on him. Thought Acosta would win. Sure enough, there it is. The Josh Parisian, again, we thought if it could get out of round one, Josh could have some success, and he couldn't. Austin Lane's not getting out of round one. That's not what he does. So I think this is round one, TKO to Spain. This has to be a, a record. Four fights, 37 seconds total. That, that, that has I'm to sure be. we could fight some real – like if you go down like the rabbit hole – there's probably some guy who fights in the UFC, Iowa regional. With one of them being a UFC fight, I, I mean, 12, That's 3, true. 4, and 18 is yeah. impressive. So, it is. Uh, I'm with you. Austin Lane, if Austin Lane is struggling with, as you said, Atafa mm-hmm. and uh, Dins, then surely the striking of Despain is, is going to be too hard for him to figure out. So I'm with you. It's Despain. There's a reason why he's priced as is. Like, there's no reason to not take the Spain by KO. Mm-hmm. Like if it, it, like it's probably the same price, but Spain ain't going to win by decision. He's not going to win by choking anybody out. He's going to win by knocking Austin Lane's head off. So um, that being said, I, I don't know. I, no, no, there's, there's no case for no, Austin Lane. No, I'm sorry. I wanted to make the not. case, but no, no, it's not. There's, right. uh, there's really not the under one and a half at two seventy is parlayable. Like it's very rare that I've, <laughs> yeah, parlay it under one and a half, but it's on the table. Yeah. Uh, oh boy, Alice Ardelay versus Melissa Martinez. Now, Jim, I want to be respectful here, um, so I'll just try and put it uh, mildly. Uh, the, the, these women are rough. Uh, these are not good fighters, and so the UFC was just like, "I know, <laughs> make them fight each other." Mm-hmm. So uh, Ardelay just lost to Shauna Bannon. That's not great. And Martinez just lost unanimous to decision to Elise Reed. Um, we talked about Ardelan uh, going into there. Ardelan has a big social media following. If you like corny jokes about mm-hmm. sex, content that you would seriously think came from a teenage boy, follow her on Instagram. Uh, it's a, it's, it's really, really something. Um, I just think her niche is social media and it's not really fighting. I think Martinez is faster on the feet. I think she's going to have more volume. Ardelian can get takedown. Uh, she's, um, uh, how do I, uh, she has some weight in a certain area of her body mm-hmm. that lets, lets her hold people down. Um, I'm, I just don't think this is a fight you can uh, bet your, your money on because you're going to be really upset when the person that you bet on makes a couple of really dumb mistakes, which I think both we're going to do. My lean is Martinez, but this is, you, you cannot bet on the, please don't bet on this fight. Even to go the distance, I wouldn't even really, really consider just because both of them can make mistakes. This is as unbettable as a fight gets for me, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, if you are betting this, which you shouldn't, you're taking plus money on Alice. 
<laughs> just <laughs> Melissa just Martinez don't... shouldn't be minus 130 against really anybody. So I got nothing more to say. They they're both not great, and this is I think more so of a fulfilling contracts situation. Uh don't forget we're getting towards the end of the year, and we saw this last year. Is it's time to use up some of these contracts. Because come January, the old roster cuts come around. Two people from Contender Series already have fights in 2024. Mm-hmm. It hadn't just had one. Yep. Um, so you're right. Perfect transition, Jim. Jessica Benet and Elise Freed. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your take on this one? Hmm. This Elise, fight Elise has... Reed is a, Elise Reed is a big favorite? Huh? It's ah. madness, first of all. Uh, it's absolute madness that at least we be favored to anybody again with the lack of ground game that she has. And it's not for lack of trying. She's been trying to get better, but it's just, it ain't happening. Uh, you got old Jessica Penne. Okay. <laughs> so what do you do with this? Uh, here's a sneaky play in this fight under two and a half rounds at plus two ten. If, if Jessica Penne is done, Dunzo. At least Reed could beat the living hell out of her. And Jessica Penne does not wear damage well at all. Could be a cut stoppage, could be broken nose stoppage. I think she's broke that nose three or four times. Um, on the flip side, if somehow Jessica Penne gets to Elise Reed's back, she most certainly can choke her unconscious. Hmm. So I think both of these uh, girls are lacking in each other's skill sets. And I wouldn't be shocked if this over at minus three something is just a parlay killer and somebody makes a mistake in round two, you know, and it goes under. So other than that, I'm not picking a side. So I have, I'm, I'm, I I don't have a name for this theory yet, but it feels like we're doing really, really well when we're fading some of these female fighters that are at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, And 41 year old, like, are we, are, is this a, a perfect woulda, coulda, shoulda, where it's like, mm. really, we didn't bet against 41 year old Jessica Penne? Really? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, I think I may end up betting on Elise Reed as, as bad as it sounds. I just, I mean, Jessica Penne's four, 14 and seven. She's only had 21 fights. Her first pro fight was in 2006. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like, Reed, she arm barter. Dakota, Losing to Emily Dakota, come on. Um, I know she has wins, uh, split against Loopy and a, you know, Albar, but that's 2021. I, I, I just, I, I think when, when I look, it's like an eye test or something, you know, you're like, ah, I know that person's not good. It's just when, when the age jumps off the page to me, I think it's just got to be an auto bet. Like, like, are we really going to watch 41 year old Jessica Penny walk down Elise Reed? I just don't think so. I don't think she's, I know Elise Reed's takedown defense is not existent. Not as not, it's not bad. It's not existent. Mm-hmm. Is Penny even going to be able to get to her? That's like, the question. If she can even get the takedown. Yeah. And even get know. to her hips. She's so slow mm-hmm. at this point. It's Elise Reed. At least I know Elise Reed's going to stand and box and, you know, you know, do some kind of striking. Am I excited about the price? No. But if I just bet against these really old fighters, and I know I said female fighters, it's probably, it's, it's, it's all old. Fighters. It's all of them. Yeah. yeah. When you would just, when you look at a pro fighter and go, God, you're old. Yes. That this just automatically be a bet. So it's Elise Reed. Uh, for me, and I, I probably shouldn't overthink this one. Breaking down tape, I don't need to. I just look at the box score and go, wow, 41, you know, kind of a, you know. no. I forget if it was five-year or 10-year age gap, but I think the younger fighter hits at a 68% clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, I forget if it was five or 10 years, but it's a, whatever and, and, age gap it is, it's the younger fighter, 68% of the time. That's a lot. But just saying it out loud, 40 year, 41 mm-hmm. years old, and it just yep. doesn't seem to go well. So uh, if you guys could do me a favor, hit the like button real quick. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment in the uh, comment section. If you can't come up with a nice hot take or you don't want to give it your best bet, let's do the, the, the word of the day is cold. Cold, mm-hmm. C-O-L-D. It just got cold here <laughs> where I live. I'm fitting. like, Very fall fitting. is here. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, winter's right around the corner. So uh, the word cold uh, in the comment section. Appreciate that. And uh, we mentioned how uh, we have a 5% best bet that is up. That is in the PFL, and we've made one pack that is up at Wager Talk. 
And that's going to have all of our PFL and UFC play. So you just got one pack for a huge, huge card of PFL and UFC. That is what we have up at wagertalk.com. Uh, if you haven't joined the Discord, what are you waiting for? Join the Discord. Tons of free plays. Um, lots of really good discussion. This is not a Discord for trash talk nonsense. This is a Discord if you take your bankroll serious and you like us, you enjoy betting your own bets and you enjoy seeing the bankroll uh, you know, grow. It's patient. Um, it's just a, a no nonsense. Uh, there's a lot of fun and a lot of very, very knowledgeable betters in sports that I don't even cover. So um, it's been just a fantastic experience for everybody. So uh, if you haven't joined the discord, please do that. And full disclosure, we always like to keep our uh, numbers updated to everybody. So win or lose, you know where we're at and we're having a great 2024 Current record stands at 458 wins, 297 losses for plus 148.85 units, 8.5% ROI. Those are our numbers from our Monday uh, weekly recap. So I always like to let you guys know for winning or losing, and it's just been a lot of winning this year. So we don't expect that to slow down anytime soon. We we're, we're, we got that 175 unit mark circled for the end of the year. So we're aiming for it. Yeah. Uh, Jocelyn Edwards, Tavares Vidal. Hot takes, Jim, on this fight. Yeah, the judges hate Jocelyn Edwards. I don't that, know why. That is a that is a really good take. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't know. If, what is it? Three, four times I've been holding a Jocelyn Edwards ticket, and it goes to decision, and I'm like, she's got to get this one. <laughs> the no. Cornell no, one. You got to get this. The Cornell one was the most that was that was annoying. <laughs> that was obnoxious, and we saw what Cornell has done since now, and and yeah. Um, the Aileen Perez as well, I thought was a little closer than the unanimous suggested suggested we've seen worse scorecards recently. That's for sure. Um, the thing is, is that she's going up against somebody who I don't think is UFC level at all. Not that Jocelyn Edwards is a world beater, but I think Jocelyn's been in there with kind of every type of fighter. She's going to fight in this division. Uh, the body shot, I like how they word body shot and don't say that it was a boob shot because it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was looking it up. I'm like, ooh, how are they gonna say this was? Oh, oh body shot. What a cop out. <laughs> uh losing to Montserrat Rendon is a travesty. <laughs> okay, I know it was a split. That fight was hideous. Absolutely hideous. She lands the fluke flying knee on Ramona Pasquale. Flying knee to the body, which we've only seen one time um, finish a fight. And I think she'll just look for a way out. The um, thing is, I don't know if Jocelyn is going to get the look of the judges. Uh, I don't know what it is about his or her style that everybody just doesn't score. Like, I know she gives up takedowns, but Jocelyn's never been finished. She's never really been wobbled. Um, so what are we scoring here? You know, uh, Vidal's going to be dangerous early. I have real questions when this fight gets tough, how Vidal is going to push through. We've seen Jocelyn in the third, put her foot on the gas, win or lose, um, and push for that finish. So I would say that Jocelyn's Jocelyn squeaks out a, uh, decision. I don't like the fact that she's a favorite. I think if you're going to bet Jocelyn, you just take the decision. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Vidal's kind of an interesting one because I, I was I was able to watch some of her some of her clips and her highlights before she got to UFC, and she was aggressive, always mm -hmm. pushing forward, like you know, high 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 power. Like some of them wouldn't look great, but she was at least trying to land the big one, and that's exactly what she did against Pasquale. That was kind of a good representation of what she did, which was like I don't have the cardio. So I'm going to go for the big kill mm -hmm. shot early and it worked. What I've seen from her the last, the last two fights is she's gotten away from what got her into the UFC. And I don't know what her gym or her coaches are telling her, but she looks lost. Yeah. She looks confused. She looks tentative. Uh, she doesn't look like she knows what her strategy is. She looks like she's trying to save her energy by not throwing mm -hmm. those big shots. And it's resulted in, two really bad losses. Like she got her ass kicked against Melissa Gatto. And that one's not as concerning as you know, the, the, the monster out Rendon is the, that's bad is, yeah. is the really concern. Like when, when you're supposed to fight Haley Cohen and then you end up fighting Melissa Gatto, like what happened there? Um, but yeah, against Rendon again, tentative, not pushing forward. I've seen Jocelyn Edwards on the other hand, lose clinch 
situations and she can be very low volume and she can go stretches without, you know, landing a whole lot. But um, I, I here, here's here's what I would want to do. I would want to wait and just watch the first couple of minutes. Exactly if I, where I if, was going with this. Yeah. If I yeah. see Vidal is back to the being the tentative and can't quite pull the trigger, it's Edwards all day and I'll live mm-hmm. bet Edwards and I'll put her in a parlay piece that I will, that I will have selected earlier and you'll ride out a Jocelyn Edwards by decision. But if Vidal like kind of looks like she's going back to the, you know what, if I'm going to, if I'm going to lose, it's going to be cause I'm exhausted in round two mm-hmm. from throwing all these, these heavy shots. Um, you know, the other thing about Vidal, she's lost weight. She's got the UFC, and I don't think it's helped her. It, it, I, I, the thing is, it hasn't, even, it hasn't reflected in her cardio either. I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So it's I, – I just – I I, I kind of don't – I don't like what I've seen from Vidal the last couple of fights just because it's not what, what I watched in her fights previous to UFC. Like, I don't know if the coaches are, have done it to her, if she's, you know, kind of done it to herself, but there is just a – a real lack of motivation and a real lack of focus and, you know, just aggression. So what gym is she at? Um, let's see. Just says, yeah. Team brothers. Okay. I uh, really don't really know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you probably aren't going to hear too much because if that's what, if, if mm. she's taking advice from them, yeah. it just does not look good in the slightest. So our boy, Happy Brad Katona Fight Week, Jim. Happy Brad Katona Fight Week, everybody. You guys in the Discord, get ready. <laughs> They're coming. Uh, there's another, another reason, re- to, another reason to get in that Discord. You get in that Discord ASAP. Jim has uh, some pictures that he always posts. Uh, uh, Gene Matsumoto's 15 and 0. Mm-hmm. Um, Katona can be just a thorn in this guy's side. I think this is going to be pretty close. What do you like? What do you think? I guess a Bracketona fight. So you're taking it to go the distance. Amen. Bracketona could have finished Jesse Butler. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> Seriously. I, it is, it's <laughs> it's the only thing you need to no play. Response, but come on. It's the only thing you need to play um, in a Bracketona yeah, fight. It's over two and a half parlayed with something. Uh, uh, Brad guys, got kind of going to decision on the ultimate fighter. <laughs> He's been going to decision for years. Stop. Come on. He gets a finish in brave. Everything else is a decision. Um, Matsumoto is looking like a blue chip prospect, but here's the thing. 15 and 0. It's getting up there, isn't it? It's getting up there. And on top of it, we just saw Dan Argetta. A look worse than he did in the Matsumoto fight. Yeah. I mean, and we can't credit that win at all now. So I'm taking that Argetta fight and throwing it out the window, to be honest with you. Um, so we got to still go back and look at Contender Series. And he also didn't have, I mean, look who we fought on Contender. He fought a 6-0 and guy. He's 13-0. and I mean, yeah. Fuck I, just, I could just see Brad making this ugly. I don't think either guy gets finished. This is a decision 10 times out of 10. This is probably one of my more confident plays on the card. You don't need to watch film on a Brad Katona no. fight. You just take the fight to go the distance. If it's mm-hmm. too juicy, parlay it with your favorite thing. That's that's all we're really looking for with Katona. His striking is not going to knock you out, but he's also fast enough to get out of the way. He's not going to put his neck in you know any bad situations mm-hmm. or you know anything like that. So, yeah, that's it. Mateus Nikolaou and Alma Baev here. Here's an interesting one, Jim. I, to me, this comes down to if you think Nikolaou's done. If you think Nikolaou's done, it's an easy bet for you. If you think he's still got something left, now you're looking real hard at the dog. What do you think? This is a zoo Alma Baev all day long. Did, are you talking about a straight bet at minus at under uh, minus 200? I really like a zoo here. I, I can't put any faith in Nikolaou. You, want, you know one of the things I hate the most? It drives me insane. But when fighters have their girlfriends in their corners, even if they also are MMA fighters. And we saw that. And it was hair on the back of the neck tingling when they walked out. I was like, oh, no, this is going to be bad. And he looked just absolutely timid and didn't want to engage, didn't want to push forward to the wrestling at all with Alex Perez. Let Alex Perez dog walk him around the cage and walk him into a knockout, which is just, it shows me that your fight is not there. We're coming off two 
consecutive finish losses quickly. Quickly. Like round two. That's a quick knockout still in today's UFC with these gloves. And that is that's post uh new glove as well, mm-hmm. isn't it? So yeah. if you're getting knocked out with these new gloves, that's a problem. He beats not Matt Schnell, who's retired. David Dvorak is a flunky. He he's where's he been? Uh, Tim Elliott, I'm pretty sure that fight at the time was Tim Elliott in the midst of his chaos. Manel Cape is a head case. So we kind of can poke some holes in this record. Um, and if you're asking me who the UFC wants to push, I'd say it's the 20 and two Dagestani, just a hunch. <laughs> um, yeah. Not that he's fought uh, a crazy level of competition, but look, this guy's a Terminator. If Nikolai had a problem with Alex Perez's forward pressure, what the hell is he going to do with Almabayev? So yeah. I love Almabayev in this spot. Love him. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a submission or knockout in this just because of the 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 uh, lack of durability from Nikolau. I, I, I think I'm with you. It's just too terrifying to try and bet any money on Nikolau. I think the skills are there, but you can't get that last fight out of your – I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> so um it wasn't know. a knockout shot that knocked him out that's the thing yeah it, it was like a lunging a punch <laughs> like no. yeah it wasn't yeah it wasn't a huge one so all right oh my is a pitch there uh pick there darren elkins and daniel pineda pretty close to pick him i believe pineda pineda is a little bit of a favorite minus 130 what do you think what do i what do we always say when daniel pineda fights we got to ask ourselves one question are you going to feel like a dipshit if you bet on Daniel no. Pineda? <laughs> is Daniel Pineda on the juice or is he not oh, on the juice? Oh, oh, that's right. right. That's right. Yes. Is he on the juice? Losing to Nathaniel Wood is there's no shame in that. Losing even to Alex Caceres, it's not great. Okay. Uh, that Tucker Lutz fight, uh, that was juice. <laughs> yeah, it was obvious. Yeah, that was, was juice. Uh, the Andre Feely fight, that was juice. Clearly juice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, this is pretty simple. You don't bet anything on this until you see Pineda and what he looks like. Um, I will say that Pineda has been uh, cornering a lot of fighters. We've seen him a lot in, in the corners recently. He's still invested in the game. He's still training every day with these guys. Um I don't know why the UFC loves him so much. They, it, they, he feel like he's got three or four different passes in his career that he's still here. Um, and look, the damage <laughs> is starting to add up for Darren. It really <laughs> is. Like it's to the point now where it, I worry. Look I, at the, I, I look at his like profile it. picture. Let's tap out. They even they couldn't well, even pick one where he's winning. You have? No, he is winning in that fight. No, I mean like, like no, I mean like winning <laughs> at the end of a fight, like with his hand raised. Like, no, let's pick the one where he's. That's because it'll get it'll flight. get flagged because he's so beat up. You just you can't have that just out there. <laughs> they save that for the dark web. Um, T.J. Brown is bad. Okay, T.J. Brown's in one of our favorite fades. I know he won, and if you look at this recently, it's been win loss win loss. Uh, this man managed to lose to Jonathan Pierce. That has not aged well. Um, no, that has not aged well. And look at the run. So he beats Derek Minner, who has, what, a minute and a half of gas. Uh, <laughs> what has Eduardo done since that fight? I don't think he's done that That's a great point. Uh, what's he's, he over, done? he's over in Samurai House. There you go. Uh, See, he's losing to Kevin Vallejos. Vallejos. There you go. Now That's one be of our guys. UFC. Yep. <laughs> So uh, I think this is the end for the damage. I do. Uh, Pineda's going to cause a car crash. So is Darren. And uh, I just don't see the power of Darren Elkins. Now, that being said, if Darren Elkins is still there in round two, you're damn sure you're bet Darren Elkins. But I would not be shocked to see this really look ugly at the end of Darren Elkins' career. I'm going Elkins. Uh, Ooh, this no- is fun. I okay. want nothing to do with, with Pineda. Like, off the juice, he is so slow. He is so plodding forward. Uh, it, it's it's bad. Um, I mean, Elkins is sloppy. He's super aggressive. He can wrestle. He can get you some takedowns, and he can turn these fights into brawls. Yes, the end is near for Darren Elkins, but is Pinedo really the guy to do it? I I, I don't think so. I mean, 
you know, like you said, losing Nathaniel Woods one thing, but he really got beat up. Um, yeah, the concern. So who, who's he beaten? Okay, Tucker Lutz and Her- Herbert Burns. Yeah, Th- those are your wins. Uh, no, thank you. Um, I, I'm not betting on Daniel Pineda. I mean, yeah, the last one against Nathaniel Wood, he was, he was talking about like how his gym got flooded, mm-hmm. but he wasn't there because he was in Denver cornering other people. So, you know, what's his real motivation here? I know there's a big step down from Pineda, but Elkins can just turn these fights real ugly. And I'm not, sure Pine- I'm not sure Pineda is going to be the guy. Um, to keep up with them. It's so. a live bet spot. I mean, I, there's, there's no For way sure. you're going to see a pre-flop bet from me or Andy on this fight. I can guarantee yeah. you that. Absolutely. Um, not it's making definitely the client a live list. bet spot. Yeah. Yeah. Not making the client list. All right. Jake Hadley and Cameron Smotherman. Uh, Hadley was going to end up being a plus money against Brady uh, high stand, which I really liked. Mm-hmm. Now he got handed a gift. Did he? Yeah. W- what do you think? Anything sub minus 400 is like just take Hadley in this spot. Cameron Sutherman is one of the worst fighters that I think we've seen. Uh, just have was- not been impressed with this guy at all. He's <laughs> he loses on contender and he's fighting these clowns with these records. He's he's not good. He's not good. And I think the UFC is doing Jake a bit of a favor here. Um, because he took that last fight, what it was short notice and up a weight class, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, right? Yep. Against Lochran. Um, yeah. You know, did him a favor. And uh, I, Jake is, if Jake loses this fight, he's probably getting cut. Like, he, he, back is against the wall here, big time. Uh, I like Jake Hadley. I think this is going to end up being Jake Hadley by club and sub. Uh, it's not, he's not going the distance with Jake. If, if the grappling starts, Hadley is going to be worlds above Smotherman on the ground worlds above him so jake hatley all day long in this i know it's terrifying but it's about the matchups he put on a hell of a show against lochran that was that was a great fight it was a really really yeah. good fight uh mm-hmm. for him especially coming off of the cody durden where he kind of got embarrassed uh losing to charles johnson and then he, he knew he had to do something because he's not well liked mm-hmm. in ufc behind the scenes he's not a he's just not a likable person guy fighter however you you know you want to say it but man you can you can turn it around pretty quick and i think he got i think some people were really surprised and happy with that he has another good performance here all of a sudden it's like oh jake hadley okay i can i guess i could like jake hadley um yeah he's looking at another four fight contract if he yeah he got handed the opportunity Mm -hmm. that a lot of guys don't get which is like you go you go from a you go from an underdog to uh, you're going to be an overwhelming favorite that you can put on a really good show. So it's Hadley all day for sure. Smotherman is not very good. Uh, Super Derji and Charles Johnson. Um, man, uh, Charles Johnson's minus 230. This could be one that minus um, 230 may look like a bargain. That's my opinion. I, th- I think Super Darji is kind of end of the road here. What do you think? Agreed. Uh, could you pull up Sue's uh, yeah. page? Sure. Um, I like this new Charles Johnson, this dedicated to actually succeeding in fighting, not just trying to get paychecks. Uh, well, said. choked out by Tim Elliott in round one, choked out by Matt Schnell. <laughs> and the- <laughs> bad, bad, bad looks. That was the one where he had Schnell dead to rights a million times and just somehow could not get. Schnell yeah, but like, how can you not fit? Like, where's your power? It's Matt Schnell. Uh, we've seen <laughs> guys without punching power. Where's Schnell. your power? <laughs> we've seen Charles Johnson be able to take a punch. Like, yeah, he gets rocked, but he'll come back. Um, this fight's been booked for a while, if I'm correct. And I, I follow Ch- Charles Johnson on his social platforms. Um, I like this new Charles Johnson. I mean, look at this. We went from our short notice guy just taking fights to now he actually gives a crap about his career and he's rattled off three in a row. You know, not horrible fighters that he's beaten either. He puts it on Hadley. He puts it on Maxim, which was a big step up, but he did the job. And that knockout of Josh Van, I mean, I know Van's not a world beater. We're kind of learning that, but oof, man, Charles is sitting on some stuff here. And his cardio is on point. We saw Madarji fade. This could be now. Here's where it gets me worried. I know it's a Charles Johnson fight. You want to take Charles Johnson by decision, but we've seen Sue Madarji fall apart here. 
two times in a row. So I think you just stick with the money line on Johnson um, and you do what you will with it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really interested in props. Playing less props this year has been very profitable, especially with these new gloves. So uh, give me Charles Johnson on the money line as a parlay piece, most certainly. Um, I'm with you. Uh, don't forget he had the torn ACL. So you got a guy True. that's, you know, now he's at least two years removed from it, but it's just more wear and tear. And yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like he's going to have to knock out Charles Johnson because he's a striker. Now you can take Charles Johnson down, but that's not Suma Darcy's game. Suma Darcy's not like going in there to wrestle and grapple and take Charles mm-hmm. Johnson. And if, and if he does, Charles Johnson will get right back up on him. No problem. You know, Johnson's going to have really good cardio. He's going to be lasting for a long time. So I'm with you. It's Charles Johnson. And yeah, I think Subadarji could get tired, uh, could get finished late. So I, I can't take Johnson by decision. I would not take under, or I would not take overs in this fight. I would just stick with the Charles Johnson money line as a, as a pretty, pretty well-priced parlay piece. I think this one could end up being kind of a steal. So uh, Rob Font and Kyler Phillips. I, I swear, Kyler Phillips has, Profile picture trips me up every time. Every time, like it, it, I don't, I don't know why. I don't, I don't watch like his contender it. series fight. You'll be like, who the hell is that guy? It doesn't look he, anything he like. Looks him. So yeah. di- he looks so different. He looks so different. It's like, yeah, yeah weird. Uh, so, all right, so Rob Font, uh, Kyler Phillips. Wow, uh, we're making Kyler Phillips this big of a favorite. Damn near minus four hundred over Rob Font. What the what? Uh, I think that line's insane. I'm not saying Font's going to win. I'm just saying minus 400 on Kyler Phillips is bonkers, man. What do you think? Fight goes the distance. I am not interested in betting on either of these guys. I think they're both. I actually think Kyler Phillips is more overrated. I think Font's underrated. So this is like the perfect storm of a close fight. And uh, yeah, if you're betting aside, you're taking the plus money on Font. I will not be. Uh, Font's got good boxing. And I got to say, we were really worried about the damage that Font took. Uh, which fight was it? Uh, was it the Sanhagen? No, no, no. Um, well, the Yanez fight. He, so yeah, he his his orbital. We're always worried yeah, about, yeah. The, about the orbitals. Um, but he, yeah, he gets the win against Yanez, and you know his his fight against San Diego was a, such a horrible look because San Diego was hurt and just took him down and laid on mm-hmm. him. It was like really you can't. But dude, look at his look at his last four losses: Jose well, Aldo, Marlon, Barrett, you can go all the way down. Fig. Go all the way down to Ricky <laughs> Simone. <laughs> yeah, like it's Sergio Pettis. Like that's a, a champion in Bellator. Like yeah, he he when he's losing, he's losing to the top guys. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't, I don't have Kyler Phillips as a top guy. Um, it's interesting you say this. I, in my article, the very last sentence is fight to go. The distance is the play. Mm. Yeah. This is Kyler Phillips. This Pedro Munoz, Kyler Phillips was the epitome of fight to go. The distance. Yes. <laughs> that was a really big bet, uh, that we made in that one. It was just, you know, them, you know, jabbing, jabbing, there's some kicks and everything. And I'm with you. I don't think Rob Font has to worry about takedowns mm. or anything. Um, Font. Yeah, his jab is going to keep Kyler Phillips at distance, but I think Phillips is just going to – I think Phillips is just going to have a little bit more volume. That's that's just that's going to – Yeah. Well, he'll have the flashier strikes. He'll definitely have the flashier strikes. Uh, Font's going to have the better boxing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, this is the – the this, this is like same price as Despain over Austin Lane. Mm-hmm. Like you're telling me Kyler Phillips is, is the same over I'm, Rob Font? Not as, feeling as, it. As, no nah, way. Not feeling it. Yep. Yeah, I, I can't put Kyler. For, and here's the other thing. If you do like this fight to go the distance, now you're asking the judges to give you the right decision. And that is a terrifying uh, proposition. So, um, yeah, I don't care who wins. Fight to go the distance. That's kind of the yep. the way that, that we would suggest playing it. So, all right, uh, main event time. Again, hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Tell us your best bet. Code word of the day, cold. Type the word cold in the comment section. Really helps the algorithm out. Um, really appreciate you guys watching and uh, subscribing to the channel. Jump in the Discord as well. Man, what a great main event. I, on paper, this is fantastic. I hope it's. Uh, I hope it lives up to the hype, but it's Michelle Pereira fight. It's Anthony Hernandez fight. Kind of hard to believe that this isn't going to be just a really, really great fight. Um, what's your take? How do you see this fight going down? Oh, I'm so excited for this. I'm yeah. so excited. We're, I want to learn so much about the two of these fighters and with this fight. Uh, 
the Michelle Pereira that we've seen recently has been a different beast. However, I don't think he's really fought anybody with a whole lot of firepower coming back his way. And by firepower, I don't mean punching power. I just mean somebody who is in excels in one part of MMA. What is Petrosky excel in? Nothing. Yeah, you're right. Oleg Zaychak, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Pateria, nothing. Getting tired Let's of that. Let's go even lower. Ponce de Libio, <laughs> nothing. Fialo, nothing. Nico Price, nothing. <laughs> Chaos Williams, nothing. He hasn't fought a specialist. Fluffy Hernandez is a specialist. And he's a specialist in, you can throw all you want at me. Now we're going to fight. Now that you're tired, now we're going to fight. This is a live bet spot, a live bet hammer spot. The books are going to be sharp to it. If Pereira's landing these things big, he's you know he's going to pull some shit out in the first round. He'll throw one off the cage, something. And if Fluffy can't get the takedown and he gets to round two, you're going to have to bet this during round one. But you could get a killer number on Fluffy Hernandez. If the knockout doesn't come in round one, it's not happening at that point because Fluffy's going to start working his game. Uh, the physicality edge is most certainly on uh, Pereira, uh, but it's about the cardio, man. It's weaponized cardio. And it, I just, I think it's going to be Fluffy pulling this out if he survives round one. Yeah, that, absolutely. I, mean, I, I don't have anything else to add. You're, you're watching and if Pereira, you, if you're hoping that Pereira gets close to the finish, but just mm -hmm. doesn't quite get it. We've seen him have cardio issues in the past, Pereira for sure. It seems like he's not going as crazy, you know, as he has, you know, in, in sometimes. And listen, we, don't, we haven't seen his cardio be tested his last yeah. three fights. These are all round one knockouts. And if there's a guy that you do not want to have a little stumble with cardio, it is absolutely Hernandez. So, and you're going to, if Hernandez is kind of a slow starter, I would really like, I, I really wish he would start these fights a little bit better. I think he, I don't know, kind of depends on the cardio advantage mm -hmm. later. And it's like, he kind of accepts some of these, strikes and you know you know some of the forward pressure like it's it's kind of like hey maybe maybe you should start your fights a little bit a little bit better but it sets up perfect for Pereira to have a good first round and then fall apart and then Hernandez gets it so I agree that this is not a situation where you want to pre-bet on Hernandez just wait you're probably going to yes. get a much better line now if you want to pre-bet on Pereira you're absolutely going to have to bet uh yeah. before so um and Pereira's plus money um if you if you take him now, you're it's, he's going to probably be a big favorite, <laughs> you know, later towards the end of round one, and then you just don't want no, any part of trying to live bet mm -hmm. on Pereira. So, um, all right, quick, quick on the trigger in this fight. That that's yeah. the way I would burn it. Whatever you're going to do, you got to be quick. Yes, yeah. Uh, all right, let's do a parlay buster and woulda coulda shoulda. Uh, I'll let you go first. Let's do parlay buster. Who's oh, gonna... I'm going to steal Kyler Phillips before you get to it. Yeah, that's really <laughs> smart. Uh... <laughs> no, it's just 100% Kyler Phillips. <laughs> we're just going to agree to disagree. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to agree to agree yeah. that, that yeah. Kyler Phillips is the one. Because, um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot of parlayable, you know, fights. Hadley's going to be a big favorite, but I don't mm -hmm. think he's losing to Smotherman. And I don't see the Spain getting tripped up. So there, yeah, there's only a few parlay a bull fights, but Kyler Phillips at minus 400 is the one that I could absolutely see Rob font, uh, you know, stealing that one. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's see what it could have should is this are, these are the bets where like at the end of the night, we're just like, man, why didn't we lay the farm on that? Why didn't I lay my mortgage on that one? Which one are we, we going to regret not going big on? Uh, I'm going to take a zoo against Nick. Oh, good. Yeah. I think oh, he's ready for the step up. I think he's catching a declining fighter and uh, a guy who's kind of lost. On, on what his what he's good at and, and how to win fights. I think Nicolau does not know how to win fights with the current state of himself. Uh, I'm going to go at least read. I, okay. I'm going I'm to go. I can't believe we didn't fade a 41 year old Jessica Penny, regardless of who she's fighting. At least Reed still has, you know, 
Elise Reed still has UFC experience and she's got the she's gonna be faster and Penne, I think's I think's done. So all right, guys, that's gonna do it for us. Uh, don't forget to grab that five percent PFL UFC pack. Good luck on your place, and we'll see you over later. See you later.